about $100 a year for access to a almost guaranteed to be empty bathroom that's always clean and always quiet, and it's right in downtown San Francisco. It's called... You're not going to tell us where it is, are you? <laughs> no, I'll tell you where it is, because you're welcome to jump in, and I really do think you should give it as a gift. Can you get us an invite? <laughs> oh, sure. It's called the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I dropped a moment. <laughs> and look, look, you don't... I mean, nobody... First of all, here's the beauty part, yeah. as, as you like to say. The, the, the great thing about it is that uh, nobody knows what you're going in there to do. They think you're going in to drool over the Rothko, you're really going in for some angry birds in the fourth floor handicap stall. <laughs> you look nice today. A journal of emotional hygiene. Did I ever tell you guys that story that uh, happened to me with a Snapple jar, Snapple bottle? <laughs> My, it was college, and my roommate was in the bathroom, and um, I think he was taking a bath, because we only had a bathtub, and I was still too shy to go in and use the, the bathroom, and I really had to, because I just got up, and for whatever reason, the sink didn't appeal to me, maybe there were dishes in it or something, and the only thing I had was a Snapple bottle, but I think it was just a, just a you know, your standard dodeca ounce, why did I say that, it's 12 ounces, <laughs> asshole. Who am I, Merlin? <laughs> How long have you been sitting on that one, uh, Grecian scholar? <laughs> Dodeca Allens. If I heard somebody say that anywhere, I'd punch myself, because I'd be the one saying it. I was shocked how quickly you fill up a Snapple bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw that it was not going to, that it wasn't going to add up. And so I took the bottle and myself over to the window and as the bottle continued to fill, I opened the window, and I did what I'd say was a fairly sleep seamless transfer from an almost full Snapple bottle to <laughs> out the second floor window of, uh, of the Eagles, the, the apartment above the Eagles Club in Northfield, Minnesota. You're a pig. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you, you filled the bottle, you pinched, yeah. yep. and then you threw out the urine and kept filling the bottle, or you let her fly? For like first, like first person, were you doing first person shooter? I I, I never pinched. I just <laughs> he took away the bottle. He hung his dick out the window, peed on the street while drinking the Snapple bottle of pee. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't there. That's what happened, though. Awkward cake. It's really like making dander soup. <laughs> when I when I try to encourage my daughter, really, 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 it's seriously, if you want a cup of water to drink while you're in the tub, I'll allow it. Because, you know, kids do that. Kids want to drink right, out sure, water. Sure. They want to swish it around and try it out. And, I'm, and I eventually, I have to go into my grandmother mode. I have to explain, do you understand what's in there? <laughs> yeah. Body water. It's just wet in the tub. Do you understand that little bits of your poo are in there? Yeah. Oh, I understand. You, you, you drinking skin doesn't bother you, obviously. Uh, I yeah. used to chew on the washcloth. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Uh, if I were the kind of person that needed to hire people for jobs, I would have questions that I think would be a little disarming, and, oh, and right. I would ask them questions like, see, you're thinking I'm going to say, do you pee in the bathtub? Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to say is, how often do you think people lie about peeing in the bathtub? Uh, that's good. Because I know that's you good. pee. <laughs> I want to find right. out how you react. Right. I want to see if you think about it. Because you pee. You pee in the bathtub, right? No, God. Do I, do I really want to, though. I hey, just... What about the shower? What about the shower? Well, no, that's the same. The shower's in the bathtub in our apartment, but I really want to pee in there. Really want to. There's no reason I shouldn't. It all goes to the same place, right? Yeah. Why don't you? Well, I don't know, because cause reasons. Because they say, or because maybe over time my shower will start to smell like a toilet. Hmm. I mean, to me, it's one of the seven freedoms mm -hmm. for my forth forthcoming book, Except the Freedoms. Go deck of freedom. I had a set and I was holding back. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's okay. I got, I got more. Yeah, that's, really, that's interesting. It's interesting that uh, it's interesting to have a tripartite call. <laughs> Adam, you, you used to talk about uh, you. You played a funny game where you like to pee on your girlfriend in the shower, not in a sexy way. That's right. I did that once, and it was it was a good story. And it was it was mm. uh, you got a mixed reception. <laughs> <laughs> well, once is cute. <laughs> yeah. Scheduling it is hard. 
I think like three or four times and it becomes a problem. It becomes a thing. Mm. I think if you do it once a week, if you if you have a, a SEPTA deal uh, <laughs> scheduling. Yeah, it's the upkeep that's a, that's problematic. Yeah. And this is the problem with women, is is that they think you're going to just do a funny thing once. <laughs> and they don't understand that that is the tip of the iceberg <laughs> that wants to go so much deeper into a part of your body. That yeah. Oh, it's our anniversary. We'll do something funny with panties. And you're like you have, <laughs> you have no idea. Do you understand like how many different sailor suits I have in a shopping cart right now? <laughs> it's fun when they tell you to stop doing something. Yeah, <laughs> in, a, in a sexy way. <laughs> it is not in the in the least sexy as possible. Okay, don't do that. Okay, don't do that anymore. <laughs> okay, don't. Just don't do that. It's like like you're packing the car up over their foot. Okay, stop. No. Stop. <laughs> no, it really hurts. <laughs> Guys are stupid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pam in a derby. Can I ask you guys a personal question? Sure. When you were kids, did you have euphemisms for... Well, it's a leading question, but it's, it seems like in most families there are euphemisms for things... And it often reflects either a family tradition or it's something where the parents are uncomfortable, you know, saying penis or bowel movement. We call it, we call it sweet, sweet cock. (laughs) Everything. Everything. What do you guys want for dinner? Sweet, sweet cock. Hey, uh, I got to go drop a sweet, sweet cock right now. Hold on a second. Hey, Scotty, come here. Pull my finger. You smell that? Sweet, sweet cock. <laughs> we were fairly clinical in my home. We called penises penises. And we called uh, bowel movements. Uh, we had a very silly family name that I'm not going to say. But but by and large, they were called BMs in my house. <laughs> it's very old school. I like that. <laughs> it's totally old school. <laughs> Have you found your morning bonus? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stay regular, Merlin. <laughs> Merlin, I'm sure you're more familiar with this than, than Adam and I are, but... Uh, this, and not as a jokey way, it just seems like something you'd know more about. But but isn't it the case that at the turn of the last century, there's a deep obsession, and, and even into like the 30s and 40s, a deep obsession with uh, bowel regularity, frequency, like that was seen as a real hallmark of health. 100%. And, and I think it started with Kellogg and ended with polio. Because there was a time when people had very little... So we're, we're way past the age of reason. We understand that you should wash your hands before you operate on somebody. We know that if you take out the heart, they die. We know all of these things. But there's still a fair amount of, like, dark matter. Like, for a long time, they didn't know how people got polio. I've talked with my um, mother-in-law about this. Like, it was really, it was a little bit like HIV and AIDS in the early 80s where people were like, you know, do you get it from cable TV? You know, like, people had no idea like how you got these certain things. And for a long time, people would just not let their kids leave the house because they didn't want them to get polio. Like it was, wow. a, it was a really big deal. I think the same thing with the uh, with the bowel stuff. And I, I just got to say, God, God love her, my late grandmother. I mean, it was a tent pole for her. That was, wait, sorry. That was her, wait, I, I missed that. What was her name was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Connor. Okay. What was it, hot, hot cock? What was it? <laughs> sure. Steamy cock? Dodecacock. <laughs> so she, this was a temple because she was really good at I it. I think she's she's of the age. She was a simple lady from Kentucky with a ukulele, and she knew that she had to drop a deuce before she could leave the house because she was a lady. Mm-hmm. I can identify with that actually. Oh really, Adam? Are are, are you are you poo shy in a public place? I went to a public school for high school. Yeah, and the, the bathrooms were gross. So I and I lived yeah, yeah. twenty minutes away from the school. But I would literally and it was a closed campus. I would literally hop the fence and get in my car and go home if I had to drop a stinky. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking I'll never get more respect for you. <laughs> and and it just it just keeps piling up like cordwood. I agree. I'm just telling you, there was like once, it was a total emergency mm. <laughs> in like eighth grade, and it was one of those harrowing experiences of my life. Because no, nobody poops at school. Yeah. Mm. It's just, I don't know. I, the people who could do it, I mean, that's so weird. It would be like doing it in a library. Because... Yeah. The bathrooms were not for bathroom things. The bathrooms like, were yeah. like a testing ground for, for social relationships. Mm-hmm. For gangs and switchblades, losing your virginity. <laughs> Smoking cigarettes. Leather jackets and combs and jukeboxes. Graffiti. <laughs> Graffiti. Ugh. Getting picked on. Reading poetry. Clear, clear a cell. 
<laughs> uh, I think one of the things that people probably do um, that we don't talk about is wherever you are in space, you have in, you have to, at some you have to some degree mapped out a route in your mind to the closest available acceptably clean <laughs> toilet. Hundred percent. Number two. Hundred percent. Now, how many? Uh, if I could ask, uh, this is too personal. Say so, but how many? Um, how many holes you got at your uh, your home? <laughs> I got a 14 step, 17 step. 17 step is preferred. 14 step is closer, depending on who's using what. 17 step is preferred just for privacy and, and whatnot. It's just a slightly better uh, experience overall. There's better ventilation, better mm. privacy. Hobson's choice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm good, though. But Which but, one do your kids use? They use the 14? They use the close one, yeah. That's why it's it's generally it's generally them. I, I usually have to check around to make sure that I mean, you know it's as clean as it, as it should be for my... My um, Anne Hathaway like ass. Mm. <laughs> that changes everything. Advice, wisdom. Here's something that I thought of when we were talking about uh, showers and baths before. Um, what if, so let's say, you know, Make a Wish Foundation, right? <laughs> Make a Wish Foundation probably receives thousands of applications, only a small percentage of which, very sadly, they can address. So what about like make a like make a kind of okay thing happen for a sick kid foundation where the only the only real dream that we can fulfill is um, taking a bath with Adam like a really nice bubble bath <laughs> but but like a you know and then and then like in a big like sort of a jacuzzi tub right and maybe the kid is a or, or older person, doesn't matter, it's not the age thing. Maybe they're not super into it at first, maybe that, that's not interesting to them, maybe they don't know who you are. And our job would be to basically talk them into the idea that uh, that this would be a great thing to do as their, their big request. It would be more like the Make a Given Wish Foundation. Mm-hmm. Right, like the wish would be semi-coerced. Like, here's the thing, we've got a wish that we can fulfill in our interest, it's like grant writing. It's not make any wish. No. It's make a wish. We're not Santa. No, no, but here's the thing. You know what? There are a lot of sick kids, and let's be honest, a lot of fakers. I bet a lot of the people who are writing in for those things are not really that sick. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? Don't you think? I mean, free Disney, please. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I I think, you know, first of all, let's be honest. There are a lot of people... They've seen Adam dance. They they they, they, they know what, what what he can do with a video camera, and I think they would enjoy a little quality time with a man who we're pretty sure does not pee in the tub. Sure, we've already, we've absolutely. Already, yeah, a- Adam's clean and friendly and approachable. He's and very intimate. I mean, even when you don't know him very well, he's just he's 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 warm. He's like a he's like a like a heating pad. I have a photograph that I want to send you guys if I can find it if I can dig it up. It's a precious photograph. Uh, it's from my freshman year of college. And it's a photograph of me um, taken from my eyes perspective. And it's when I was a freshman taking my first photography class. And I'm in the bathtub and I'm reading the fountainhead. (laughs) That's awesome. So that's part of the wish, too, is that you'll read them selections from the fountainhead. No, the whole thing. The whole thing. thing. Weren't they really big, Adam? Did you read, like, all, all the way through? You would read those books? Yeah, I read the whole thing. Yeah, it had to have been like five, six hundred pages. Wow. What about you, Scott? Did you ever? Uh, I think I went through. You know, I think I went through a similar period of my life, but I was always uh, way too soft for that kind of uh, thinking. And so the stuff that kind of cracked my head open at the same time would have been the Bell Jar, Sylvia Plath. Did you ever bathe with it? Did I? Ever... I never took a bath with the Bell Jar. Hmm. Huh? I should. Take a bath. Is that is that at Adam's book club? Take a bath. <laughs> Look, you don't know a book until you've taken a bath with it. That was dodeca stupid. <laughs> I'm a professional voice actor. Here's what I like about Make This Wish. Is that, yes, first of all, as a pilot program, I think we could definitely say, here, you are a child who should bathe with Adam. Are there certain kinds of wishes that we're pretty sure we can fulfill. It's not going to be Michael Jordan. Yeah, but yeah, are, yeah. are there things that we can feel very comfortable saying, here is uh, here's a, a dough deca bag of wishes. I got, a, are, I got a way better. I, got a, I, I think that's great. Take the ball. 
but I'll bet we could do it like, you know how um, a magician, when he says take a card, any card, a lot of times there's the illusion that you're taking one of 52 cards in the deck, right? There's the illusion that when you make a wish, you're actually, you know, Ooh, uh, I, I don't know, uh, me if you, and if you ask Morgan somebody Freeman to pick a ride a horse. Ask somebody to pick a number between 1 and 100, most people will say 37. Right, exactly. Same and, deal and here. You see, it feels like deal. entropy, but the thing is we've marked the wish. We've marked the wish, and we're basically forcing the wish. And so maybe maybe the only wish is not take a bath with Adam, because Adam can only be in one place at one time. And, and clearly we're going for volume here. So maybe we have five or six different options that we just sort of... We give the illusion 